Pedro de Quiros was a Spanish explorer, fired up and possessed by wanting to find the great South land, the huge continent that must exist in the Southern Hemisphere in order to balance the land mass in the Northern Hemisphere. Otherwise, the whole world, world would topple over. This was an idea believed since classical times and was not finally disproven until Cook in the 1770s. It was thought that this great South land must have untold wealth, spices, gold, and minerals. And Quiros wanted to discover this land, convert the population to Christianity. Wanted to do this before the Dutch or the British, who were Protestant, might find these people and convert them to their own religion. So there was this huge passion that Quiros wanted to find this land. And when he'd gone to Vanuatu in the 1590s, he believed he had found this land. He believed it was an outlier to a far larger continent. When he got back to Spain, he then petitioned the king that he should go out again to find this land, to convert the citizens and to secure the gold and treasure for Spain. It would be adding a fourth part of the world to the Spanish realm, as he told the king. And so he wrote a series of documents called memorials to the king, pleading, each one becoming more insistent, almost more hysterical, that he be given another voyage to find this great south land. These were printed in very limited numbers because they were confidential. But one of them leaked. And so the rest of the world, mainly the Dutch and the English and the French, also were inspired by this idea of finding the Great South Land and colonizing it themselves. For seven years, Quiros kept up this barrage from 1607 to the king, these documents. The library has now secured the last two, which means we have the complete set of these Quiros memorials, the only complete set held anywhere in the world. They're the first printed documents that relate to the Great South Land. They're also the first printed documents that relate to Torres' voyage because Luis de Torres had been with Quiros, Quiros when he came to Vanuatu in the 1590s. But he'd gone home by another route and discovered the Torres Strait, a gamble he took by simply entering it at the, west, at the eastern end and sailing west. He had no idea where he was going, whether there was even a strait but he took the punt and sailed right through. So these Quiros memorials are the very prehistory, if you like, of the European discovery of Australia. They are linked intimately with the view that there must be a great southern continent, the terra australis incognita, the unknown south land, which would be fabulously wealthy. Quiros, indeed, after seven years, did achieve what he wanted. The king did give him another voyage. But he died before he could set out. In fact, the 17th century was not to be the Spanish century for the European discovery of Australia, but the Dutch, who now started to take an interest in Australia not to convert its citizens. The Dutch were not interested in conversions. They were interested in trade and making money. And when they discovered they couldn't make any money out of Australia, they dropped us rather like a hot potato. And so Tasman in the 1640s was the last Dutch explorer sent out to make money from Australia. Ironically, all our minerals were there. The Dutch didn't discover them. <laughs>